Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. We're looking at uh, Richard Borkham's book, Jesus and the Eyewitnesses, the Gospels as Eyewitness Testimony, Richard Borkham, 2006. And this is really uh, a whole series just to get us thinking about Richard Borkham's scholarship. Um, like I said, I, I acknowledge, I, I agree with the book, about 85% of the book. I agree with the main thesis of the book. Uh, I think the book is uh, a wonderful book. It's, it's produced shockwaves in the scholarly world when it came out in 2006. And um, it's a very, very good book and helpful. And I would encourage you to read it. And, and what I'm trying to do is to get you to think as a skeptic and as a Christian. And I think as a skeptic, you need to consider some of this scholarship that will challenge your skepticism. And as a Christian, you need to read this scholarship because it will encourage you in your faith to know that what you believe is not myth, it's not hairy fairy ideas, but it's rooted in good, solid uh, scholarly work. So, page 95, Borkham says, The appointment of the twelve, that's the twelve disciples, constituted, as several scholars have agreed, a prophetic sign of what God was doing in Jesus' ministry. So, in other words, the historical Christ studies <coughs> have come to see that the twelve disciples were actually real historical people. Borkham writes, it is not difficult to imagine that their role in the earliest Christian community would include that of authoritative transmitters of the sayings of Jesus and authoritative eyewitness of the events of Jesus' history. If any group in the earliest community was responsible for some kind of formulated authentic authentication of a body of Jesus' traditions, the twelve are as much more obviously likely to have been that group. So if we can verify that the twelve disciples actually existed and knew Jesus, and that's what most scholars have become round to actually believe in it, then it's not hard to understand that they would have been custodians of the uh, eyewitness traditions about who Jesus was. That's so wonderful and amazing, is it not? Um, and let's just turn to Matthew chapter 10 verse 2 and 4 Matthew 10 2 and 4 the name of the twelve apostles are these the first Simon who is called Peter and Andrew his brother James the son of Zebedee and John his brother Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the publican James, the son of Alphaeus, Lebius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into the city of Samaria, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now you can find the name of the twelve in Mark chapter 3 verse 6 to 6, 16 to 19, Luke chapter 6 verse 13 to 16, Acts chapter 1 verse to 113. Um, so basically these names that are mentioned, these twelve disciples, uh, be, have, have been regarded as historically true people and they would have been custodians of the eyewitness material of Jesus. <coughs> again completely demolishing fall criticism now there could be an argument going back and say yeah but some of the names some of the disciples th the lists don't seem to match they seem to be different names and the answer to that is that some disciples would have had two names um, so for various cultural reasons which uh, Barkham goes into on page 101 and 102 So we'll leave it there on that and uh, we've got uh, some other bits of information.